Hi, welcome to the show. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever used gels on your lights before? You know, the colored gels. Well, for years, I've gone out and bought gels. You know, the Lee gels, the Roscoe gels. And you're going through and you're looking at a swatch of all these different colors. But you're not really sure how that gel is going to come out in terms of photography. Today, we're diving into color. Actually, we're diving into using a color meter. You're listening to the Master Your Lens Podcast, episode 125. Hey, John Lee Dumas here, the founder and host of EO Fire, and welcome to the Master Your Lens Podcast, the photography podcast dedicated to sharing inspiring stories, technical tips, and powerful secrets to help you become a better photographer. And now, your host, Matthew Jordan Smith. Hello, Photography Nation. I hope you are cool wherever you are. We're now in July, July 24th, 2019. If you are listening to this podcast on the date that it comes out. Today, I'm in Tokyo and it is steamy and hot. Actually, it's more about the humidity. It hasn't really been that hot yet, but the humidity can drain you. So lately, I've been shooting more in studio. To be honest, I love shooting in studio because I have full control of my lights and the feeling that I give with my lights. Have you ever thought about that? The feeling you can create not only with your light, but the color of your light. A minute ago, I said it's hot and humid here in Japan. How would I show that in a picture and make people feel that that picture is hot and steamy? How do you show it? How do you show hot and steamy in a picture? If you've been listening to this podcast, you know I spend a lot of time traveling from Japan back to the States. And I get to see a lot of movies. Recently, there are two movies that I actually want to purchase. People don't really purchase movies anymore, right? But I still like to have, believe it or not, a DVD. (laughs) Don't laugh. But I do. I love having that DVD that I can watch anytime I want. Stop it. Go fast. Go slow. And really dissect a movie. Now, the two movies that I really want to watch and study are Atomic Blonde, a movie that came out in 2017, starring Charlize Theron. I love her, but that movie, Atomic Blonde, the lighting in that movie is sensational. They use a lot of color, and the color sets the mood. If you want to have a real impact, With your images, control your light and control your color. The other movie that I really, really want to own is Blade Runner. No, not the original, but the last one, Blade Runner 2049. That one also came out in 2017 and stars Ryan Gosling as the main actor. And yes, Harrison Ford is also in that one as well, like the original. And like Atomic Blonde, the lighting is absolutely amazing. If you haven't seen these two movies, I highly suggest you go and watch them. I haven't purchased them yet, but I think after I finish doing this podcast, I'm going to jump online and order them. Yes, the DVDs stop laughing, but I guess in that way I'm old fashioned. But they're fantastic movies. The use of light and the use of color in both movies are absolutely amazing. Lately, I've been more into color than ever before. 
And I'm not talking about just getting neutral color, making sure you have the right color balance. You can do that fairly easily by using a color checker passport. It will give you the best color out of your images. But what's the next step? The next step is having even more control to know exactly what type of light you are capable of getting from your lights. Let me say that again. Yes, the next step is going further. Knowing what type of color you are able to get from your lights. You see, not every light is capable of giving you the full range of color. That may be a shocker to some people, but it's absolutely true. You may be photographing a model who has on a beautiful yellow dress, but in your photographs, it doesn't come out the same. Or maybe she has on a blue or a red dress, but in your photograph, the colors aren't as vibrant. They don't have the same power, the same punch. They seem washed out. The color looks like it's diluted. Well, one of the reasons for that is every light, every strobe light or artificial light is not capable of rendering the full range of color. But what if you could read your strobe light or any light for that matter and find out if that light that you're using is able to render all the colors? Or better yet, what about giving you a percentage of how well it reads every color? Well, recently, I got my hands on the Seconic Spectral Master C800U Color Meter. And I've got to tell you, it has blown my mind. And I am having so much fun diving deeper into color. If you check out my Instagram, you'll see I've been posting more colorful images lately. Well, there are two reasons for that. One is my light. Two is the color meter. I am now able to see exactly how my light reads color, how it renders every color. Not only that, now I have real control over my gels and how to use them. And I know the light temperature of every light and how to get it where I want it to be. I can tell if my strobe is really giving me daylight or is it a little cooler or a little warmer. You see, when it comes to giving you the correct color, it will change based on where you are shooting. In one studio, it could give you a cooler reading because maybe the walls are white. Another room, you may have dark wood floors, and that also affects the color. In terms of being warmer than daylight or cooler than actual daylight. And by daylight, I mean the color temperature is reading 5,500 degrees Kelvin. Now I know a lot of photographers don't use a color meter. Sadly, a lot don't use a light meter. But these two tools are very important for us. Today, more than ever, we need every advantage we can to stand out as a photographer. I mean, stand out from the pack. If the average photographer is not using a light meter, not using a color meter, and you are, that gives you a considerable advantage. And today, you definitely need that advantage. Now, the funny thing in photography, and sadly, you can see this all over YouTube, photographers saying, oh, you don't need a light meter. I've heard this a lot, but you only hear this from photographers. You never hear that from anyone in the cinema world. You know, the guys making those amazing movies with great light, great sets. There is no grip, no gaffer saying, oh, I know what the light is. I know what the f-stop is. Trust me, nobody knows by looking at the light. They're just guessing. And a guess is just not good enough. Not if you really want to make consistently beautiful images. All the guys and gals in the movie industry, the cinema world, 
they're all using meters. They're all using color meters. To be honest, the color meter is made more for them than for photographers. But is there an advantage for a still photographer to use a color meter? Absolutely. Lately, I've been working a lot with Ari Sky Panels. Sky Panels are those amazing lights you see used in all those movies I mentioned earlier. And they can do some amazing things. I've been actually mixing my Profoto strobe lights with Ari Sky Panels. So I need to know what's the color of my strobe and what's the color of my sky panel. My Siconic C800 is giving me all that information so I can tweak it and correct it to get exactly what I want. Now, the first thing I want to tell you about a color meter, it is not a light meter. It does not give you your f-stop and your shutter speed and your ISO. It does not do that. That's what a light meter is for. A color meter is giving you readings on the color of your light, just like it says. And the C800 can read all ambient light, all strobe light. When you first turn on a C800 color meter, it will ask you to calibrate the meter by doing a dark calibration. There are three settings on the Lumisphere, and the bottom one is CAL, C-A-L, short for calibration. You have to calibrate it first. So you'll set it to the bottom setting, which is CAL, C-A-L, for calibration, and you'll do a dark calibration. The calibration takes about 15 seconds. Once it's calibrated, you'll move it from CAL, to one of the settings to read and measure the color of light. Now there are two modes to read the color. The first one is your standard mode for reading all ambient light of any type and also reading a low output of strobe. That's in the center position for the lumisphere. The top position is for reading high output strobe, strobe only. So again, your three positions on the Lumisphere is the bottom setting is calculation. In the middle, you have ambient and low strobe. And the top is high output strobe. You'll turn it from calibration to one of your color reading modes. Now you're ready to have fun. The first thing you want to do is set your target. What do you want the color to look like? Let's say, for example, you want it to feel like daylight, which is 5,500 degrees Kelvin. You'll hit target and you can actually set your color temperature. In this case, 5,500 degrees Kelvin. I'll punch that in on the meter. I'll hit OK. And now I'm ready to read the color temperature of my light. I'll use the measure button which is on the right side of the meter, to take a reading and find out what's the color of my light. It will show my target where I want it to be, and then it will show me with a CCT reading of what the light really is. CCT is correlated color temperature, the color value of your light registered on the Kelvin scale. Kelvin is a base scale an international way of measuring color. 5,500 degrees Kelvin is daylight, where 3,200 degrees Kelvin is tungsten light. So again, I set my target. I measure the light to find out the color of the light. And then I get a reading, a CCT scale, telling me exactly what the Kelvin reading is of my light what the color temperature is of my light. And then I find out exactly how to get it where I want it to be. What filters I need to get it to my target color. In this case, I set my target to 5,500 degrees Kelvin, and then it will show me how to get there. What filters I need to make it read exactly 5,500 100 degrees Kelvin. I can do this on any light and every light, 
even if I have multiple lights in the room, I can make sure every light is reading 5,500 degrees Kelvin. And if it's not, I know exactly how to get them there. This is powerful stuff. The first thing you want to do with the color meter is find out what is the color of my light. Is it daylight? Or maybe I want something other than daylight. The Sekonic C800 gives you the option to set your light from anywhere from 2,500 degrees Kelvin, extremely warm, to 10,000 degrees Kelvin on the very cool side. From extremely warm to extremely cool. Have you watched the HBO series Game of Thrones? Yes, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. And if you watch it as well, you've seen it go from very warm scenes to very cool scenes. And of course, very dark scenes as well. Now, in a movie... They may shoot one scene over several days. They can't guess about the color temperature. They've got to know exactly what that scene was shot at so when they go back the next day. Or they've got to go back three months from now and redo a scene. They know exactly how it was shot in terms of the color and the light. Maybe one scene is shot where it's 7,000 degrees Kelvin on the very cool side or 10,000 degrees Kelvin really, really cool. The color meter gives you a precise reading of the color temperature. So you can shoot one scene that's at 10,000 Kelvin, go back a month from now and make sure you have exactly the same color temperature. When I was using film, well, I still shoot film to be honest, but when I only shot film, I used to have a color meter. And I used to keep my color at 4,800 degrees all the time. I loved that color, that color temperature. With digital, I've gotten away from that. But I've been asking myself, why? I loved that color with film. Why not go back and get exactly what you want with digital so it stays that same hue, that same color? That same feeling. At the beginning of today's podcast, I mentioned two amazing movies. And the color and the feeling of those movies based on the color. Remember those movies? The color meter gives you exact readings with your color. Like your light meter gives you exact readings with your f-stop and your ISO and your shutter speed. It's one more tool that can really make a big difference in your photography. Now, I was telling a friend about the color meter and how much I'm loving playing around with it. And to be honest, I am still getting to know this meter. There's a lot to it. I'm learning more about light because of the color meter. And that's always a good thing. Well, I was telling a friend about the meter and the first thing he said is, oh, Color meters are very expensive. Color meters are on the higher scale. They're used mostly in cinema, the movie industry. But what you get from this meter is really, really cool. And I believe it's worth the price. We don't think twice when it comes to buying a lens. But what about the other tools that we need to make better images? But let's go deeper with this color meter. Another very cool aspect of the color meter is having the ability to read how light renders color. Not all lights are created equal. Let me introduce you to CRI, Color Rendering Index. With the Color Rendering Index, I can read the light in one area, And it will tell me if the light is able to render the full spectrum of color. And it will break down every color in percentages. For example, right now I'm doing this podcast. In this room, I have an overhead fluorescent light. As I turn my meter on, 
and set it to the CRI index, color rendering index, and I measure the color in the room. Right now, it gives me a range of all the colors and how well this light can render color. I take a color measurement and it gives me a breakdown of every color in percentages. Let's say I'm shooting a girl in this room and she has on a red dress. Well, under this light right now that I'm sitting under, I wouldn't get a really good red. The red under this light is only able to read 28% of that red. Only 28%. What about your lights in your pictures? Are you able to get the full range of color with your lights? How do you know? Now, I've got to tell you, this really shocked me. And now, I'm finding out about all my lights. Are they able to render the full range of color? This is really important stuff. When you measure color using CRI, the color rendering index, it gives you so much information about your light's ability to render each and every color. So now, if you're photographing somebody in a red dress or a yellow dress or a light blue dress, you know about your light's ability to render that color. Right now, if I was photographing somebody in a yellow dress, I'd only be able to produce 52.2% of the yellow. The CRI index tells me I'm only able to get half the color. Under this light that I'm under right now, my colors are gonna look very dull. Now imagine being able to walk into any room under any type of light and find out if your light can render every color and break each color down in a percentage so you know. Now earlier, I had my strobe on and I changed the color meter to read strobe. And with my Pro Photo strobe, my colors were reading in the 90% range. My red was giving me 96.7%. I was getting great color by using my strobe. For those of you who are only shooting with natural light in natural light situations, this color rendering index will change your life. To know what kind of color you can get in any situation. For those of you who are shooting weddings, imagine knowing whatever room you're shooting in, if you can get true color or if the color isn't the way you want to be. Or better yet, let's say you're using two different types of strobes. You can find out what each strobe is reading color-wise. Maybe you're mixing different lights from different manufacturers. One strobe will give you beautiful color and render the full range of color. Another manufacturer may give you only 60% of the true color. Or, even worse, it can fluctuate with every single flash. How do you know unless you're using a color meter? Now I know Many feel they don't need it. But the funny thing is, you don't know what you're missing until you see the difference. Personally, I'm really enjoying shooting and using a color meter. And I still have a lot to learn. But I am enjoying the process and pushing myself to learn more. And now, I invite you to do the same. If you're into video, this will really knock your socks off. To see my latest color work, check out my Instagram at Matthew Jordan Smith. Feel free to leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. I love that this meter has every Lee filter, every Roscoe filter programmed already into the meter. So no matter what brand of filters you like working with. It shows you which filter from Lee or Roscoe you can use to correct your color and get it exactly right.
Whatever brand you like, you can select in the meter. Very cool stuff. In wrapping up, what the color meter does, it enables you to get the exact color you want in a situation. Once you learn what a certain color temperature looks like, you can read that color temperature and get it exactly there every single time, wherever you're shooting. Let's say, for example, I want to do a shoot and get back to my old favorite color temperature of 4,800 degrees Kelvin. I'd hit target on the meter. I'd punch in 4,800. I'd hit OK. I'd measure my color temperature and then, based on the readings, adjust it to be at 4,800, whether it's strobe or whether it's ambient. If I'm using Lee gels, it will tell me which Lee filter to use to correct it to get exactly what I want. If I'm using Roscoe gels, it will tell me the exact Roscoe number gel to correct my light and get it exactly where I want it to be. This is powerful stuff. Even when I have multiple lights, I can find out how to correct every single light to make them all match. Whether I'm using a strobe light or whether I'm using two different ambient lights, I can get them all to read exactly the same thing by doing a simple calculation. So there is no light corruption going on anywhere in my images. Very cool stuff. I wish I had this meter back in May, but now that I do, it gives me more confidence going into any situation, anywhere in the world. As I said earlier, I travel a lot and I've been studying the meter on the plane. Even going so far as to read the light when the lights are very low, when they're almost out, what color is that light? I used to wonder, but now I know. And so can you. I want to remind you that this podcast will be going on break for the month of August. We'll be coming back in September with a brand new season. I want to encourage you to get out and shoot as much as you can this summer. But don't just take pictures without a purpose. Shoot the things that you really enjoy. If you're not sure what those things are, just get out and enjoy life. When you find yourself having fun, take a mental note. You're now doing what you love. Now wrap that around photography. The things that make you feel good, show that to the world. Let them experience it through your photography. That's what it means to shoot what you love. Once you discover what that is, share the experience in your images. You'll be surprised what happens. All right, Photography Nation, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Master Your Lens podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and tell all your friends. Your reviews help get the word out about this podcast. And if you are enjoying this, please do leave a review. Thank you again for your time and letting me share the joy of photography. Until next time, always dream big. Bye for now.